Hello, Internet. This is the Electronic Music Chameleon Module Octopus here for another engaging Ableton Live tutorial. And over here, I got quite a treat for you. We're going to learn how to map VSTs like a pro in Ableton. This is something that took me a little while to get as an advanced user. And once I did, it completely changed the game on how I approach every third party VST. So to do this, all I'm going to do is going to open this VST called ABL3. Audio Realism Baseline 3. It's an amazing 303 emulator. It's the cheapest thing to get if you don't want to buy the real thing. And the real deal is that basically on this little drop down menu, as you see that I'm clicking on, I have all these parameters that I can immediately move that interact directly with the actual unit. And most plugin companies that have a script for Ableton will immediately map that, and that allows us to do tons of fun things such as mapping all these parameters over here in this drop down menu of the designated channel and I can just automate things which basically means I can make them move up and down and so on and so forth to my best liking so as you'll see as I move things around you'll see that certain parameters start moving in accordance to those lines so I will have that set but in certain BSTs such in this example, I'll be using Rock Papin's Raw, which is an amazing distortion synth, very aggressive sounds in this one. Um, if I open the little drop down menu, as I showed you with ABL3, I see nothing. So, in order for me to automate anything inside this synth or preset, I'll be able to have to hit configure first, and then from then on, click on any parameters. And notice that I'm having parameter list getting filled in on the bottom there as I'm clicking anything I want. And once that is all set, I also have the ability to change the order where I want things to go. So for instance, if I want this parameter over here, I can switch and rearrange it while the configure is on, or I can replace the position of it to so say, switch this one for that one, or switch that one for this one, and rearrange things in a way that works the best for me. The reason I do this is because when we have certain controllers like Ableton Live or like an APC40 or most controllers you'll face, um, you'll have the parameter list pretty much operating from the first eight you ever operate. So this is why choosing the first eight parameters is such a crucial thing for your workflow when you're mapping like a pro. So another aspect that can help speed up the process is also having macros assigned to it. So to macro anything, what you want to do is you want to right click and you want to group the specific VST you have. And what this is going to do is create an instrument rack. The instrument rack gives you access to, say, stack more instruments and also have macros. So let me delete this point real quick. And over here, all I have to do is go to my parameter list and simply just right click on anything I want, so map to macro one, map to macro two. And these things will pretty much stay there and will respond accordingly. After that, I can just click on the save and pretty much save it as a preset as raw map whatever and once it's all set click OK and it's all pretty much set so once I summon this plugin again I'll pretty much have all my macros assigned to it and I can do other things such as EQs delays everything all inside of this bracket and it will be saved as an instrument so that is a very professional way of mapping things and optimizing the workflow but as you saw, I had to do that configure thing over and over. So if I click and open a fresh one right away, and I click on the drop down, oh, all the parameters I had before have completely disappeared. So to remedy this, I'm going to click configure one more time. And I'm going to click on everything I want mapped. So I will click frequency, this, that, this thing here, I'll select the volume. All the things that, you know, seem kind of important and things that I want to, like, mess around with. Or even just sound design. They have the most out of everything. So, once that's all set, say I have all this, that, this volume, and I have this entire big list of parameters. I can choose the order I want things to go on. And after that, the key trick is, I'm going to zoom in. The key trick is to right click and select this thing that says save as default configuration. Once you click on this, if it's the first time, it will not pop this window, but since I've done it before, I want to click yes. And what this will do is that every time I open this VST fresh, 
effect. You see I deleted it, and I'm going to reopen it again, and boom, there it is. And when I click on the drop down, all the parameters are there again. So remember that trick, guys. It'll save you tons of time, and you'll be able to engage into so much more fun. Another thing I wanted to show you guys is how it integrates with the Ableton Push. As you can see, it's like becoming my LED workflow down here. So another thing about the push is, and I'm going to move it real quick. So as you can see, the Ableton push here, what I'm allowed to do is if I click on the actual raw, which is the instrument you see in front, and I'm going to pop open the parameters window so you can see. Now, um, if I click inside that specific synth, it opens a sub-menu where I can see different banks. And right now, you can see that the first ones I, the first parameters I move are the first age. You can see a couple of them moving right away. But if I go to the second bank, I go to the next row of eight parameters, and so on and so forth. I'll have as many banks as as many parameters I already have on my default programming saved so that allows me to have all the flexibility of automating the entire vst with anything i want at any point in time and get the most out of it so there's a little roar from the raw um uh, i hope this type of mentality in terms of organizing your vsts serves you well in your workflow and production so this is Module Octopus. Uh, follow me on SoundCloud, Facebook, YouTube, anything that helps you. And keep me in touch with anything you would love to learn more about or any other things that can optimize your workflow and keep you inspired for music making. All right. I hope you guys have a great one. And keep rocking it, guys. Peace.